All right, welcome back to the channel. I'm Andrew with Running with Dr. Andrew. I'd like to share with you episode 17 of Common Running, running Injuries. Now let's talk about runner's knee. What is runner's knee? Runner's knee is uh, something that's call, also called patellofemoral syndrome or condomalacia. Uh, it is, it's pain on the front part or anterior portion of your knee, and it can be quite painful and sometimes debilitating. Let me show you a few things to help out with your patellofemoral syndrome or runner's knee. All right, I'll see you back after my run. Gotta go. <laughs> Saw a little spider just cross the road. That was kind of cool. Usually, I see those guys around in September. No, it's the first time I've seen one in June before. It might be because it's been cooler. Uh, it was a little tarantula that we have here in Arkansas. Kind of cool. All right. Welcome back. Today I'd like to talk to you about uh, patellofemoral syndrome or runner's knee. Again, that's where your kneecap, uh, typically your, your pain will be on the front part of your knee. And then what happens is, is that uh, a lot of times we'll run and our knee will go in more and that causes the knee to shift in and the patella will kind of shift out just a little bit more that causes some some pain around your your kneecap and you know things that can cause that is if you're over striding uh, meaning you're um, you're heel striking way in front of your hips that causes some pressure on your knees and it causes your knee to go in more ground re reaction forces meaning forces are going more forces are going up the chain uh, up through your ankle, knee, and hip, causing more rotation inwards. And that's cause can, can cause some pain on the front portion of your knee, and um, also bounding. And, you know, uh, bounding meaning you're you're spending a lot of energy going up. That can cause more rotation of the knee. And so they did a study, uh, as a research study, where, where they took, uh, I believe, 42 runners, and then uh, they studied runners that were injured and not injured. So there's a, a synchronous pattern of running that has to happen. Uh, what happens is you have a pronation part of it, the loading part of your running, and so what happens is your knee goes in just a little bit, uh, for the shock absorption and then what happens is there's something called screw home mechanism where your knee rotates the top portion your thigh rotates in your knee rotates out and then you get your fit where it becomes more rigid and pushes off so that has to happen in a synchronous part what happens is whenever that doesn't happen your knee will go in more too long and it continues to go on rather than here and pushing off so that's more of a stable position rather than a lot of times people will continue on to push off like that and I'm kind of exaggerating so that way you can kind of see the mechanics of it push off there and I can already feel just a little bit of st 
stress on my knee on side there and how that can cause more you know IT band syndrome it can cause you know hip issues back issues ankle plantar fasciitis <laughs> issues so all these things that we have been talking over past you know this is episode 17 so every episode even through the back and neck issues that we're talking about that that loading is all about a mechanical problem uh, with the kinetic chain again we're kind of like a chain link fence if you can kind of think of it uh, if you move one part of the cha uh, chain link fence it's going to affect the other part and so same thing with running and again we're, we're a single leg sport we're always on one leg all the time so you think about it if you're not stable in one part of your kinetic chain that's going to cause some pain somewhere else and so what we're talking about today is is runner's knee and that's something that uh, people can have issues with and also female runners this is a big thing for female runners too especially uh, in the, um, naturally females are going to have wider pelvic bones and so that's going to cause more of a we call a q angle where the angle goes in towards towards here it's a little bit greater than males males were a little bit more narrow here so it goes down to the females and so what happens is they'll tend to be kind of going in towards this position here and so they had definitely female athletes really need to train those hip external rotators external rotation meaning coming out and that's going to help it build those those stability muscles to help prevent anything going on with your knee as well so then also we found if, especially if you're a trail runner this is very important for female runners because you can actually you know if you step wrong or you know if you're stepping in a hole or something like that, that's something you have increased potential for tearing your acl which is acl is one of the big ligaments in your knee that helps stabilize and keeping your your shin they what it does it keeps your shin from going forward um, so if you stepped wrong in a certain position and that can cause, you know, some, maybe some tearing in, in, in that ACL if you, if you don't have good stability. Because that's more for kind of, you know, road runners may not necessarily have that issue. But, uh, you know, typically we think of ACL injuries of somebody that's a football player and or basketball player or something like that. But definitely running, you know, especially if you're doing a lot of... Um, uh, trail running, going up and down mountains, uneven terrain. There's a race in Seward, Alaska. It's, it's called Mount Marathon. It's, I mean, people are going down this big mountain. They're basically falling down it. So I can see how if you don't have good stability in your hips going down, that definitely could cause some, some pretty significant injuries with that. So I think definitely um, with patellofemoral injury I think a lot of times whenever I see patients they're really strong on their quadricep and hamstrings either one uh, but they're really weak in the hips and really weak in the ankles one of the two so it's it's usually when we're strengthening things and help with with the knee or whatever it's always mostly we find is the hip and, I, and this is kind of repeating myself over and over again each video I may see this like well okay it's it's all about the hip but really it is it's it's all about the hip and hips hip strengthening so if you if you're weak there um, then you may have some issues and and so you need to go and do some strengthening I think one thing is a lot of people think I, I you know I need, need to get out there and stretch you know my knee feels kind of I need to stretch my AT, IT band well um, we kind of find that the IT band is a very thick tissue it, it uh, doesn't stretch very well. It's, it's very powerful tissue, so it's not gonna really uh, the, uh, help you out if you stretch it. So you're gonna get more bang for your buck if you're doing some hip strengthening uh, compared to stretching. So I advocate, advocate that more is, um, you know, sometimes people we overstretch, and so if you're overstretching, you become more hyper mobile, too loose and not stable. And so that stability is what you need for, especially for longer races, you know, marathon, ultra marathon, people are doing hundred mile races where your muscles are going to fatigue quickly. So you need that strength in order to um, continue on. And I'm not talking about things like you're going to go and do powerlifting or, you know, uh, trying to do bodybuilding type of strengthening. You can, you can do weight 
Uh, you can do body weight strengthening exercises. You can do resist a band strengthening exercises. All those will kind of help out uh, with, your, with your stability there. So I'd like to show you a few things that you can do to help out with your uh, strength with your hip and help hopefully prevent any issues with your, with your knee and, and, and mo hopefully help with your runner's knee there. Uh, so one thing you can do, you can do things locally to your knee. So one thing is that you can do, I cut a couple pieces of uh, kinesio tape. I don't know if you can see this here. I uh, usually like to make sure my knee is bent whenever I do this here, so you can kind of play around with this. You can get this stuff out at a sporting goods store. Um, it's this nice, comfortable tape. And so what you're going to do is you can cut it in kind of in a Y shape. Tape it here. So you're going to start on the inside part of your knee. And what you're going to do, spread it out here. And um, sometimes that tape just kind of coils up, that's okay. So you stretch it about 50% there, kind of come around your knee there. Go around your kneecap, or the patella. So it kind of helps support, gives it a little bit better support there, almost kind of building a, a knee brace for you. So this taper right here, you want to make sure not to put any heat on top of it because it's kind of heat activated that can cause a burn. Um, but you can shower with this on, uh, bathe with it on. Usually it lasts about three to five days. I usually tell patients if it starts to itch, take it off right away. And then another piece. I usually like to do several different pieces, but I'll just do two for, for this video. Right here. Come down. Just like that. So that kind of helps helps with your kneecap, give it better, something we call proprioception. So proprioception is where your joint, um, where you know where your joint is in space. So if you feel like your body knows if it's bending, straightening, so that kind of is proprioception. So it helps with, the, basically helps with the balance of that knee. So it gives you better stability, helps activate muscles better. And so that kind of, whenever you straighten your knee out, it may kind of wrinkle a little bit. That's okay. That's kind of what it looks like. Uh, that tape type. And there's many type of taping jobs that you can do. This is just one of the many, many ones that you can do. And so the other thing that you can do, just a simple, again, we we're talking about hip abduction strengthening. So there's two types of strengthening that you can do. Uh, one is closed chain exercises, meaning your foot is going to be on the ground while you're doing some sort of exercise. If it's squats or if it's a step up, anything where that foot is on the ground, that's called closed chain. So this exercise is an open chain type of exercise. Okay, we're going to strengthen here. So you're going to lay on your side. These are really good. They still challenge me. So you can kind of point your foot down. Sometimes it gets the more the glute, uh, gluteus medius muscle. So it's a muscle on top of your, your hip. And so what you're going to do, you're going to raise your hip up. I like long holds, three second holds, one, two, three, and then slowly come back down. Raise back up, one, two, three, and slowly come back down. That, Lowering is going to be, so if you did kind of this right here, you know, like you see in the 80s where they're raising their leg up and down, that's not going to really do anything. You're not going to create any stability. So you're better off doing 10 slow ones than 50 really fast ones. 
up and down. So I would do, again, start off with 15 or so, and you'll notice if you haven't done these before, it will start to um, cause some, some soreness, some burning, exercise burning there. So this second one that you're gonna do is that's hip abduction. That's gonna work on the abduction, the side portion of your hip. And then we're gonna work on some external rotation exercises. So you can strap on a band and then what you're going to do, you're going to lay down, kind of do a clamshell exercise here. And so same thing, you want to make sure that you're using your hip and this is going to be getting on the rotation part of the hip. And so we want that knee to go into external rotation. And that's going into external rotation like a clamshell. Hold it for about three seconds and slowly come back down. Again, you can get a good workout with this resistant band. Slowly come back down. Raise up. Slowly come back down. Okay. It's up again. Slowly come back down. Okay. Good. So the third exercise, you're going to use two different type of muscles. You're going to use your gluteus maximus to help lift your, your hip up. Up. And then you're going to do a clamshell working on the external rotation. So this is more of that closed chain exercise. You're going to raise your hip up and come out. Hold that for about three seconds and come back down. Okay. Raise up and come back out. Okay, so nice and challenging exercise. I did about three, so I can already feel a little bit of burn there, so you know it's kind of a good exercise. So that's definitely one exercise that you can, again, we can go over many exercises, but I think these are kind of good ones to start with, uh, help out with this. So we're gonna do, show you one more here. And again, this is another closed chain exercise. So if you have one of these bands, resisted bands. This is kind of a pretty tough one, but you can get different different uh, um, sizes. So here, and come out so everyone can see me. And so what you're going to do, again, you want that knee to go into external rotation. This is where internal rotation is. Come out, hold it for three seconds, come back in. Come out, Come back in. So you're pulling that band out, outwards. Out. This is kind of a challenging one here. And out. <coughs> Working on that rotation part <coughs> of your um, of your gait. So definitely, whenever you're landing, you want to make sure that knee stays out rather than in here. <coughs> so that band kind of forces you to go out there too. So that's. That's the object of that exercise. So that concludes, that gives you at least a good few exercises to do to start with strengthening your hip, hip abduction, hip external rotation type exercises. Uh, if you have any comments below, please comment. Any questions that you have about uh, patellofemoral syndrome or runner's knee. And again, there's many other exercises that we can do. Uh, maybe we can do a few other type of um, runner's knee series. We can do that as well. It's one, one that I, it's a very common type of injury that people have. And so uh, just leave a comment below. Uh, if you would like to see more of these, let me know. Definitely we can continue on and continue on with more, more different exercises and different type of treatments for that. And so if you haven't subscribed to this uh, channel, please hit subscribe and ding that bell so you don't miss any other videos that I may post. I try to post at least three, sometimes it's four or five videos. Uh, I do a, uh, try to do a daily short with a, some sort of exercise that might be similar to this. Or sometimes it's, uh, you know, my runs, you know, how, how I'm doing with my running type of thing. So different, different, different types of topics I may do on the YouTube shorts. And so, and also give this video a like. That definitely helps out for anyone that may need to view this video for, you know, runner's knee or, you know, patellofemoral syndrome. And so everyone keep safe, keep running, and we'll see you next time.